Do you guys ever find yourself feeling depressed after losing session? Thinking, did I make the right call there? Or did I just spew away all of my chips? Fever dream of a session for Rampage continues. <laughs> Fucking everything beats you. <laughs> well, in today's lesson, I'm gonna teach you guys how to calculate your equity and pot odds the right way. So you guys don't ever have to feel terrible after losing hundreds or possibly thousands of dollars. And guys, I assure you, it's not that hard because after you learn these simple rules and strategies, then I promise you're gonna be making a lot more money at the table. So make sure to tune in until the end. But first, let's start with the basics. And for those who already know, well, a refresher never hurts. So how do we calculate pot odds? Well, let me give you guys an example. If the pot has $100 in it, the villain bets $100, then it's gonna cost us $100 to win a $300 pot, right? So all we do is take what it's gonna cost for us to call, which is $100, and we divide that by the total size of the pot, including our potential call, which equals to $300. So in this case, we're dividing the call, or $100, by the total potential size of the pot, which is $300. Or we can just do one divided by three, which equals to 33%. Really easy, right? Don't worry, it gets trickier. But here are some different increments that can possibly help you guys remember the next time you're sweating bullets in a massive pot because you have no idea whether to call or fold. All right, so these are the basic increments for having to call $50 to win different pot sizes. For example, $50 to win $150 pot, that's obviously three, uh, 33%. Uh, 50 to win 175, that's 28.5 percent. 50 to win 200, that's four to one, that's 25 percent, and so on. Now the even numbers are easy to calculate, but the odds between them can be a little tricky. So I just like to think of them as being in betweens. You know, like if you get four to one or three to one, you know, four to one is 25 percent, and three to one is 33 percent. So then if the pot's $350, then I know it's gonna be in the middle, somewhere around 28%. Make sense, you guys? That's an easy way for you guys to remember the next time you're dealing with uneven numbers. So if someone goes all in for $500 in a $750 pot, that means we have to call $500 to win a $1,750 pot. And I know if the pot were $1,500, we get 33%, and if the pot were 2,000, then we get 25%, then I know since $1,750 is in the middle, then we need 28.5% equity to call, which is in between 25% and 33%. Are you guys following me so far? Excellent. Now, of course, this will take time to get used to, but I promise if you practice this during every session, then you'll significantly get better every time you play. And it's gonna help you play way more confidently too. It's gonna help you make quicker decisions, uh, which is gonna tilt your uh, guys' opponents even more, which is why you guys are here, correct? Perfect. So if there was a pot you weren't sure of, then write it down in a notepad or your phone. Take a quick break and figure it out if you did something right or wrong. If you guys don't wanna lick away all your money, then this is simply what you have to do. You've gotta plug in the holes. It's kinda of like a plumber going to someone's house and there's leaks all over the place. If, we don't, if he doesn't fix those leaks, then the home and that person is gonna drown, right? And the home is gonna be absolutely destroyed. It's the same exact thing with poker. But the next step in determining whether or not we're gonna make either a losing or profitable call in the long run is to determine our equity. Now this is pretty basic, so I won't cover it too much. But first thing is, we wanna calculate how many outs we have. And if we're on the flop, everyone knows you multiply that by four. And if we're on the turn, we multiply that by two. So if we have a potential of 12 outs on the flop, then we multiply it by four and we get 48% equity. And if we're on the turn and we only have eight possible outs, 
Then we multiply that by two and we get 16% equity, which is very, very low. We're gonna rarely have odds to call unless the pot is massive. Now, if you guys have been watching my recent PLO videos, then you should all know one of the biggest mistakes players make in PLO is they chased way too many draws. It showed he had 1% equity, but I don't even really know where it's coming from. If you're in a multi-way pot and you don't have the draw to the nuts, like a nut flush draw or a nut straight draw, or even at times a nut full house draw, and you're facing a big bet with a call or multiple calls, then you should not be considering those valuable outs because those outs can actually have what we call reverse implied odds, which means that even if we hit our outs, then it can cause us to get in a worse spot and possibly lose even more money. Are you guys seeing the pattern here? These are all concepts you need to understand to become a winning player consistently. Now, of course, there are exceptions to the rule. For example, let's say we open on the button with queen, queen, king, five with clubs. The small blind who's very loose and passive and calling about 40 to 50% of his hands calls an extremely aggressive three better who three bets around 18 to maybe 23 percent of his of his hands uh, pots obviously we're not going to fold a, a hand as strong as this on the button so we call and the small blind calls and the flop comes nine eight two with two clubs so we have an over pair with the third nut flush draw the small blind who's short moves all in for a hundred dollars in a three hundred dollar pot the big blind thinks about it for a little bit and eventually moves all in for $400. Now, in this spot, we don't even really need to calculate our pot odds. We mainly need to calculate what the small blind big blinds ranges are. And if we look at the big blinds potential three bet squeezing range here, well, a normal range, if you guys see this in the PLO trainer on PLO Mastermind, is gonna consist all of these hands, like Jack957, double suited, a 9876 double suited, ace jack 97 double suited, so he can have lower clubs with the straight draw and a pair. He can have king 10 nine, six, double suited. He can have jack jack 6 6 double suited with lower clubs as well. And if we know his three betting range is much wider than uh, a theoretical optimal uh, three betting range, then we can safely assume our opponent's range is going to include a lot more hands than just pocket aces with the flush draw or other hands that dominate us, which means that we should definitely call all in here as there's a pretty good chance we're ahead of both players' ranges. Now, if you guys are serious about taking your PLO game to the next level, then hit that like and subscribe button as I come out with lessons every three days and if you want to enroll into the best PLO training site in the world, then hit that link in my description for PLO Mastermind, as it gives you lessons that goes over every single scenario you can possibly imagine, as well as a PLO trainer that tells you exactly what ranges to play in every single spot. So I highly recommend anyone who wants to get better or is serious about the game to subscribe to PLO Mastermind. It's only $100 a month to access all the lessons and only $100 more to add on the PLO Trainer, which means that for only $200 a month, you can have full access to every possible tool to help become a certified PLO Crusher and be 10 times better than every single person you play against at your local casino or online game. That way you guys can potentially make thousands of dollars in the long term or even month or year. It's exactly what's gotten me to this point today. It's helped me become so confident in my PLO game because I remember when I first enrolled a few years ago, I was watching lessons all day when I was eating, when I was relaxing in bed during my breaks for my sessions. And yes, even while I was on the toilet, all right? Don't judge me. And after only a few weeks, I started to see all of my hard work pay off. It, it, it compounded over time, and now I'm crushing way more. I'm consistently better uh, than I was when I first started, thanks to Jay Nandis and his amazing platform. So definitely hit the link in the description and go sign up today. Don't wait, you're losing money not signing up. And now let's break down some more examples where you should be calling 
and one where you maybe should not be. Now, let's say we're playing 5-5 in an insane game. There's aggressive players and, and seven other players that rarely fold preflop. Does that sound familiar, guys? That's going to happen in a lot of PLO games. We start with $500, including most other players. Uh, middle position opens to $20. The cutoff and the small blind both call. And we three bet pot from the big blind to $110 with ace, king, jack, 10, double suited with hearts. Everyone else calls, which means that the pot is now $445. Are you guys having fun yet? <laughs> the flop comes 892 rainbow with one heart, and we flop an open-ended straight draw. The small blind, who's also very loose pre-flop and loose betting out post-flop, immediately leads out pot and is all in for $390, which means that we are now having to call $390 to win to $1,225. Or if we simplify it, we can just say we're calling $400 to win a $1,200 pot. So all we have to do is divide 400 divided by 1,200, which is easy because it's simply one divided by three, which means that we need 33% equity in order to make a profitable call here in the long term. And guys, because we're drawing to the nuts, we're gonna have possibly nine clean outs to win. And if you guys remember, we just have to multiply nine by four on the flop, which should theoretically give us 36% equity, which would make this a call. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of folding this because they're afraid that other people have their outs or they're afraid they're up against a set and they don't do that well versus set. But guys, if we remember, villain's range is going to be wide. So we can have any two pair, uh, any, you know, any pair with the straight draw, which means there is a possibility we can hit even more outs. We can hit a backdoor two pair outs or even a backdoor flush draw. We might even have an ace that can be good against hands like Jack-Jack, 10x, Queen-Jack, Jack-X, which gives us even more equity in this hand. Now, of course, we're not gonna have nine outs every single time as other people can have our outs, but in the long term, it's gonna be a profitable call here. Um, now, let's break down a tricky spot where we should fold even though our hand looks pretty. <laughs> let's say we're playing a loose passive game where we're absolutely running over the table. We open on the button with king 10 9 7 with two clubs to $20. The big blind, who's extremely loose, but extremely tight when raising his hands, calls for $20. So now the pot is $45. The flop comes queen jack 4 rainbow with one diamond. Uh, we flop a wrap, I mean a monster wrap. Villain checks, we see bet $20. As I like to see bet a little bit bigger in live games, whereas if they're tight calling, then I may be, may be betting one third pot. A villain check raises to $80. And of course, with our wrap, we're gonna have near 45% or more equity on this rainbow board, which would make this a slam dunk call. So now the pot is $225 going to the turn. And we're praying that we hit one of our outs here. The turn comes a deuce of diamonds, which brings in a backdoor flush draw, and we absolutely brick. And the villain snap pots again for $225. Now things are gonna change a little bit because there's a backdoor flush draw that we do not have that a villain could possibly have here. But first, let's calculate how much equity we're gonna need to call in this hand. So remember, there's now $450 in the pot. We have to call $225 to win a total pot of $675, which means we simply divide 225 by 675, which gives us 33% equity. Now that means we're gonna need to have over 17 or 16 and a half clean outs or 34% equity in order to make this a profitable call consistently. But again, let's see what sort of hands villain is check raising here. All sets. And any set without a flush draw or straight draw means we're gonna have 37% equity against those, but is he really check raising any set or any two pair? Remember, guys, he's very, very tight when check raising. Now, any two pair without diamonds or a straight draw, we're gonna have 40% equity. Versus any two pair or set with the backdoor flush draw, now we're gonna have 30% equity. 
versus sets or two pair with an open-ended straight draw that have our outs, we're now only 20%. And at worst versus two pair or a set with the straight draw and a flush draw, we only have 17.5% equity. So this is so important to know exactly what our villain's check raising range is. Is it tight? Is it loose? Does his range include any set, any two pair without a draw? Or is he mainly check raising uh, two pairs and sets with backup? So three out of five of the time, we're not gonna be getting enough odds to call, which means that in theory, we should be folding this the majority of the time, especially versus tight players. Because us not having diamonds here is gonna take away a lot of our possible outs, since there's a very good chance with the villain's check raising range here, he's either gonna have those sets or two pairs with either a straight draw, flush draw, or sometimes even both. Now, the times we want to call or want to make exceptions um, are, are times like this. For example, let's say we're playing deep. And if we're playing deep and the villain is check raising a much wider range, like any two pair, any set without a draw, and falling to rivers often when draws hit, then I don't mind peeling at all or calling. It may be profitable in the long run. Because if we have a diamond in our hand, then we can possibly move all in if a backdoor flush hits to try and get him off two pair or a set, especially if our image is tight. Do you guys see how I'm using not only equity and pot odds, but I'm using my image along with the villain's image and their possible range? So if we know villain is only check raising the best hands here, then we definitely have to fold. It's very, very easy. But if he's very, very loose, and we know that he's holding lots of rivers and uh, we're very deep, then it can be a very good call, especially if we have a diamond. But in general, I lean towards folding this overall. We're just not gonna have the right outs three out of the five of the times. Does that make sense? Perfect. So if this video helped you guys become more confident and understanding when to call or fold with your big draws, then hit that like and subscribe button. That way you guys don't miss my weekly PLO lessons plain explains, hand reviews, uh, shorts, so you guys can continue to crush your local PLO games. And remember guys, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Every day you wanna get a little bit better, you wanna remember something a little bit more, and you just wanna practice a little bit more as well. So over time that will compound, and eventually you can become a certified PLO crusher. All right, so guys, remember knowing how to calculate pot odds, equity, how many outs and your player's uh, image and range can help you avoid not only leaking money ever again, but it will also help you exploit all the players you play with every time. And it's gonna make it very difficult for them to exploit you and get money out of you. So if you guys love this lesson, then let me know in the comment section how this video helped you. And if you guys want me to cover any other spots you're finding trouble in, please let me know. And until the next video, good luck at the tables. See you on the next one.